China, 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 China. Well, China, 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 China. Um, well, everybody knows, like uh, you know, President Xi Jinping um, released the news, put the blockchain in the national level by um, October 25 or 24. Um, actually, it's not really a surprising surprising for everybody. I give you a fact, um, by December of 2016, like three years ago, China put AI and blockchain into the five years national plan. So I would say it's more like follow up for what the China government tried to do in 2016. So, um, but it's a really good sign for everybody and it kind of gives lots of motivations and incentives for whatever the blockchain startup or big enterprises, small enterprises, are going to full speed to build up you know, blockchain applications following um, the instructions. Uh, China is a world superpower, there's no disputing it. So uh, when the Chinese president says something like blockchain technology is worth looking at closely and considering, it sends ge geopolitical ripples throughout the world. So uh, if, if you want to talk about a crypto influencer, it's hard to beat the Chinese president. Yeah, yeah this is a, actually a great uh, unlocker of the industry itself. A lot of miners are located in China. After this step, actually, a lot of uh, miners would be from gray to white, you know, this direction from gray to white. Uh, a lot of exchanges will be uh, opening the, uh, how do I say, branches around the world. Even Binance now opening the branches around the world. So here is the, I would say, the biggest uh, part of the industry was located in China. And after this step, I would say it's flourishing and it will continue flourishing. I don't think I can. I think the, the biggest issue for us with the Chinese market is the low penetration of uh, Visa and MasterCard. Almost all of the payments in China are done with uh, uh, WeChat, Alipay and UnionPay. Um, and UnionPay is blocking very harshly anything to do with crypto. Same goes with Alipay. I'm guessing everybody, see, everybody has seen what happened with uh, uh, Binance and the announcement that they support Alipay. That took Alipay something like five minutes to respond on Twitter that, no, you can't support that. China is a China is a very interesting uh, animal. I, I used to say that China is a different animal. It's a different planet. And I, I'm very bullish about what's happening for a few reasons. First, we as a company, we've been backed by Chinese investors in Beijing since five years, before we were in the blockchain space, first of all. Secondly, I've seen the, the change of landscape uh, with the ban in 2017, and yet a lot of local companies that grew and developed businesses. And today, with the declaration of the president about uh, blockchain, you can see that there is a, a, a shift of, yeah, a shift of um, paradigm, I don't know if it's the right word, the paradigm shift, uh, that the country is very bullish. It doesn't mean that they are bullish about trading and crypto only, like, hey, let's gamble, but they are bullish about the technology, about how, what you can build and how global it's going to become. And, and I think that China as a country, Chinese company are way ahead in the industry. I'm a European guy, I live in Europe. We do business in Asia, Europe, we don't do business in US, but I, of course I'm watching what's happening. China and Asia in general, but China is three years ahead of the rest of the world, period. And the mentality of Chinese entrepreneurs, they are fearless, they, are, uh, they, they, they work 24 seven. You cannot beat them. So it's either you embrace them or they kill you. So you better embrace it. So what, what's uh, the impact of China is, is, is actually very uh, significant because uh, President Xi hardly ever makes a very strong comment, but he did make a comment saying that China wants to go full force with, with uh, blockchain tech. So that actually there was a recent uh, huge blockchain conference in uh, uh, Wuzhen where they normally hold these very big internet uh, conference, Alibaba and uh, Tencent, all these players that, that joins. And uh, so uh, we went there and with any single panel, there was 1,000 people and everyone was so excited. And you see a lot of these traditional sector people, even from manufacturers, uh, even the politicians are coming to the conference to understand what is crypto about. And you start to see that even the Chinese news media, the central news, CCTV, people talk about blockchain 101, you know. Uh, one of the funny stories I heard is that um, all the Chinese uh, officials 
they have an app to learn the, the latest the new direction of the, company, uh, the, the country is trying to go. So they were learning about uh, the, the one row, one show, uh, and about, about all that. And they put blockchain 101 in there. So everyone has to learn. So I, I think that that's going to be a very significant leap from China. And I think another impact is that because China now is all about crypto, I don't think other countries want to lose out. So USA, Japan, all these guys will probably jump out and say, hey, uh, we want to go full force with crypto. So I think this is a huge thing. Yeah, yeah. So China has created their own currency now, and they're like really given the green thumb for blockchain. Uh, the reason why China is doing it isn't necessarily this like beautiful utopian open source. It's because blockchain is trackable. So if they say, hey, everyone has to use this currency, well, now the populace has actually become more, I guess you could say, not censored, what's the word I'm looking for here, more tracked. Because you can't, if you can't pay in cash, which is what India did, because they want to remove corruption, you only can transact on government-sanctioned uh, things where they have full transparency. And so that's what China is doing. I think blockchain, you know, everyone thinks it's either good or bad, but there's all these places in between. You can look at a solution like Libra as well. Um, a lot of these things just have means to an end. I feel like Libra is something that will allow for a lot of financial inclusion to over half the world who's underbanked or unbanked. A lot of us here at the conference in the first world, you know, that's not really on our mind. Where We all have bank accounts. We're all fairly well off. And so we're like, oh, we can be utopianistic and be like decentralized and all these beautiful things. But for the majority of the world, solutions like Libra uh, are, are really, really powerful. And so to circle that back, I think what China is doing makes sense in their application. Um, and we're going to see all sides of the spectrum of blockchain, the utopias and uh, governments that are just trying to like squeeze the populace to do exactly what they want. I think the China comments are great because it legitimizes the industry and all the work that people have put into for the last few years. So, you know, China's coming in saying, hey, this is our stand on it. This is how we want to adopt it. It's going to make other countries take notice. Similarly, just like, hey, Libra might not have worked out, but it made people take notice and in, in, introduce some discussions and thoughts. So China doing this is going to basically legitimize other, other countries that have been earlier on saying, hey, see, look, we're down the right path. And ones who are kind of sitting on the sidelines saying, hey, maybe we should start paying attention because if we don't, these few countries are going to take the lead and we're behind. Uh, the fact that China is warming up to blockchain uh, is good for the industry. Uh, I don't think that this is uh, kind of a done deal. You need to give it time. Uh, but once the direction is set, uh, it's good for the industry. The net, net impact is good. Um, obviously, market reacts in a very volatile manner. So I, I think it overreacted a little bit. But long-term prospects for, for the industry remain very strong and stronger than ever. Uh, what is happening in China is that the government was in the... I would say that the government was in the studying mode for last one and a half, two years. And now they are like they think that they have studied enough and they have a framework in mind that how it should work in China. And, uh, you know, so right now they are, they are supporting these minings and all that stuff. But I'm not sure how cool they would be with, let's say, things like ICOs and, you know, IEOs happening around and how cool they would be for the privacy-enabled technologies like privacy currencies, for example, Zcash and Monero and all that. So I'm not sure about that. I'm still trying to study their behavior. But knowing uh, their previous uh, behavior, I think they would try to restrict a lot of things where they can't control and only allow the things where they can actually regulate and have a very uh, close sandbox for the execution of these things. Well, uh, I think it's a very optimistic sign that China and President Xi Jinping uh, is focused on blockchain as a core technology. Uh, I think many economists and governments all around the world consider that blockchain is the technological foundation of the new money and the new economy. And they want to understand it and draw more startups and more businesses to set up shop in those jurisdictions. And I think China, as other nations, understands that, that to form that core technological layer, to build the foundations of this, they want to capture as much entrepreneurial activity as possible and to stimulate those businesses to go there. For example, for China to congregate in Shenzhen. Uh, Switzerland has been doing the same. Many other small nations are taking advantage of this. Singapore, the same transforming themselves into hubs to leverage this early on and build the future of finance. President Xi, his announcement basically about the expansion 
of blockchain, particularly in China, it will have a ripple effect around the world. Um, there are a number of angles to look at, but to begin with, because there's validation of blockchain in China, it means that the existing players there, now there's more confidence that they can continue to build. Now, of course, the thing is, there isn't enough clarity yet in terms of what they actually want to do exactly, but the fact is, business is back. One of the things we do know that they want to do is to release their digital currency electronic payment, their centrally backed token. I think this is going to play a key role in the global landscape for the adoption of cryptocurrencies. When a country like China is saying, I want to issue a cryptocurrency, it means that everyone else is going to have to follow suit and do the same thing. We're going to have to push on creating regulations and to understand how cryptocurrency can actually be used in the real world. Essentially, it looks like we're trying to move into the next stage where we may end up at some point replacing fiat with a digital format like this. And this is one of the starting points. So I think that's where it's going to make a huge impact. For Tomo Chain, I think it just, again, adds added credibility for their use case of blockchain. So that means that right now we're working with the local regulators to put together a sandbox regulation in Hanoi, officially. And I think this is going to help us to accelerate that process so that we can really start to expand in terms of using Tomo Chain within Vietnam and the larger Southeast Asia region. So, um, you know, the recent uh, announcement coming from, you know, the Chinese President, uh, President Xi is definitely a very good, uh, you know, adoption for the audience around Asia to start to understand a lot more about blockchain, right? So right after, you know, the announcement, you know, you see a lot of tech giant in China also to announce, you know, the initiative or motivation uh, regarding to uh, uh, blockchain. So I would see this is definitely something that will push the mass adoption further and eventually also help to push the regulation further and eventually to bring also the infrastructure to a higher level. China coming into this is going to be massive. It's one of the, the highest population groups on the planet. Uh, it's, it, there's a lot of wealth that's in China and having the, the president uh, sort of focus attention of the country on that is going to do nothing other than make uh, blockchain just the come into the existence that a lot of the true believers think of a decentralized future uh, with apps where you can earn and, and uh, just more tools available to us than ever before. So it, I think it's still going to take a little while from, hey, let's do this, to figuring out a regulatory framework that China's okay with. But I see nothing but beautiful, uh, green, open spaces for our, for our businesses to grow into. The, uh, I was very happy to see the Chinese uh, Prime Minister talking favorably about blockchain. I think it's a huge step forward and I, as everybody uh, understands this. Uh, for us specifically, it's uh, time will tell. I mean, uh, I mean, the Chinese market is already very crowded with uh, many interesting projects. We are, of course, also trying to become a player there, but uh, time will tell. Uh, maybe he kind of alluded that people should pay more attention to it because they should. Blockchains, it's a revolution, um, and there's many applications uh, that you know the Chinese people could benefit from, especially from food traceability and product traceability. I think that's very powerful, and that what you could do with it. Um, and it provides a lot of, um, you know, trust in the products that are made. And I know China's, they're trying to promote this made in China and give consumers a new perception of what is made in China and, and the quality of the products that are made in China. And this is a great way to do it. And it's, it's a great way to, you know, establish better relationships with their trade partners. I think it's really good for the Chinese markets. Um, at first they were, I mean, everybody is talking about, oh, it being banned in China and every, like when I say that we are really strong in Chinese markets, a lot of people ask us, um, are you, uh, are, are, isn't it banned, isn't it legal, what's happening? And it's, it's really um, heartening to see that um, they're taking a step forward in this and um, I, I really do look forward to progresses in China and I believe that, I mean, I may be biased because um, we're from a Chinese market, but I believe there's a lot of potential there and we can grow exponentially. 
So China is actually very positive. Uh, it, it gives a lot of uh, credibility, I think, to the blockchain space and the technology. And I think people are going to start asking questions like, do we need as many centralized social structures as we have now? If, uh, if we can create algorithmic structures that can kind of interface between human interactions. India and China are juggernauts in terms of GDP, um, impact, and talent. They have so much of the world's talent. And I think that both of them have taken a very conservative approach when it comes to blockchain technology. And I think they've done that to, to preserve their interests and to retain some of the existing paradigms that exist. But I feel that that's going to shift. And I feel blockchain will enable them to actually have more of a stronghold on taxation, reducing corruption, and the ability to actually make positive change. But I think it's going to be a staged approach. I think a lot of the legacy infrastructure and you know, a lot of the old corrupt habits that all the governments in the world have are going to be ratified through blockchain and it's going to be somewhat of a painful process to get rid of those. But once that gets cleared, I think it's going to be a, you know, a lot of greener pastures um, to uptake. And in terms of China, I think China is really taking blockchain a lot more seriously now than ever before. And I feel that we're going to see some openings in China. Um, actually, it's going to have a very positive um, for VeChain because we have been doing exactly what President wants in the last three, four years. It's going to give us the advantage, like we already run for three years ahead, and for sure we want to do everything we can, even we want to work harder to secure the leading position. Also, at the same time, I'm giving the reminder to my team, don't go too high. You've got to keep calm, focus on what we can do, you know, because by the end of the day, we still just start up. We have limited resources. We need to focus on what we are good at, build on the strengths, not weakness, and continue to, uh, to scale up. All right. Thank you. I would say now, the, now it's actually the break point, you know, the, uh, as soon as the American government is blocking Libra, blo blocking Tone, and doing everything to restrict the cryptocurrencies, China is doing the absolute opposite stuff. So they are trying to adopt, and now they are disclosing this information uh, worldwide, like, yes, we adopt the blockchain. I would say if uh, United States would be so slow, soon or less, uh, sooner or later, the, definitely China will overtake them. I mean, overtake the technology uh, leadership in this case. As for influence and new trust, uh, we think it's fascinating uh, as it drives more awareness and adoption of the whole crypto asset space and enriches our community. Well, we are still not sure because from one hand it can offer additional opportunities from us, for us, on the other hand, it can be that the administration, the Chinese administration, is going to be very focused on their initiatives and they will not want to have like open initiatives, which we are doing. So, yet to be seen. Uh, for the sad thing for India has been that uh, we have been a laggard in many of these uh, technology-related adoption and we are begging the government agencies in India to not fall behind on this big uh, you know, revolution that is happening. But having said that, and India being such a big economy, and there, there has been a problem of big black economy, so government, it's natural that government will be very protective of the retail. Uh, but we feel that, uh, you know, slowly and steadily, with taking the China example and US example, government will at least start to tone down their, you know, ban kind of thing, and start thinking towards the regulatory and regulating kind of things. So, you know, I, I'm positive, like I'm always a permanent bull, for India and I think we'll, we'll, we'll come across soon. I think that is the worst idea ever. Um, it's going to be the next big brother. This is their plan to just take over the world, man. One step at a time. One country at a time.